the spectrum auction has concluded successfully bahut acche se spectrum auction complete hua hai the much anticipated 5g spectrum auction is finally over in this auction the spectrum at various bandwidth worth 150173 crore rupees was sold to the top telecom players Reliance Jio was the top bidder spending over 88000 crore rupees to buy radio waves Airtel was second on the list spending over 43000 crore rupees Vodafone India spent 19000 crore rupees while the Adani group the newcomer to the industry spent 220 crores The 5G connectivity could be a game changer for the sector and the government hopes it will power a new tech boom in India. Why so? 5G is super fast. A 5GB movie can be downloaded in just 35 seconds using the 5G internet connection. It can be downloaded in 40 minutes in 4G. 2 hours in 3G and staggering 2.8 days in 2G. This speed could help companies offer services and business models. It will also help you get ultra high speed connectivity. All of this could help bring next generation digital transformation which is critical for India to achieve its target of 1 trillion dollar digital economy. No wonder then the big companies Bharti Airtel Reliance Jio Vodafone Idea and the Adani group are interested in this auction The sector has been around in India since 1851 and it has seen a lot of changes over the years In this video let's take a look at some of the big transformations Let's start with the bit of history here After independence all telephone and telegraph companies were nationalized under the department of post telephone and telegraph under the ministry of communications After nearly 4 decades the postal and telecom services were separated In 1985 the department of telecommunications was formed and it was the local and long distance operator In 1986 it was reorganized and two new public sector undertakings were formed. MTNL was to provide telecom services to the four metro cities while VSNL would provide international telecom services. In 2000 a third PSU BSNL was created and the new entity took over the remaining telephone services. In the first four decades after independence the sector grew slowly from 80000 telephone subscribers in 1947 to 5 million lines in 1991 most of us didn't have access to wireless telephone till mid 1990s it started to pick up after the center created new policies The center believed that a robust telecommunication sector was needed to make the 1991 economic reforms a success. In 1992, the Department of Telecommunications invited bids for licenses for cellular devices across four metro cities, but the licensing was very expensive. It announced a new telecom policy in 1994 which promised to ensure that telecommunication is within the reach of all citizens. It promised affordable and quality telecom services. It also wanted to make India a major telecom equipment manufacturing hub. In 1995 it allowed bidding for cellular licenses and wireline licenses. The Telecom Regulatory Authority of India was established in 1997 to provide regulatory oversight. In the Telecom Policy in 1999, the center moved away from a high fixed spectrum fee to a lower fixed fee and revenue sharing model. The concept of unified access license rationalized the licensing policy and allowed operators to provide fixed and wireless services. It also offered initiatives to boost the sector. 
soon the telecom sector started to boom the number of mobile phones grew to 16 million in 2003 32 million in 2005 200 million in 2007 and 560 million in 2009 The Spectrum auction of 2007 is rather infamous. In August that year, the Department of Telecommunications started the process of allotting 2G Spectrum for telecom along with Universal Access Service Licenses. It received 575 applications for UAS licenses from 46 companies. In November, the Finance Ministry had written to the DOT raising concerns over the procedure it adopted. But the demand for a review was rejected. On the 10th of January 2008, the DOT decided to issue licenses on a first come, first serve basis, advancing the cutoff date to 25th September from 1st October 2007. Later on the same day, it posted an announcement on its website saying that those who apply between 3.30 pm to 4.30 pm would be given the licenses. In the same year, Swan Telecom, Unitech and Tata Teddy Services sold a part of their stakes at much higher rates to Etisalat, Telenet and Docomo respectively. In 2009, the Central Vigilance Commission received two complaints regarding irregularities in the spectrum allocation to Loop Telecom and the grant of spectrum to Swan Telecom. Later, the CBC directed the CBI to investigate the irregularities in the allocation of 2G spectrum. On the 21st of October 2009, the CBI registered a case and filed a FIR against unknown officers of DOT and unknown private persons or companies under various provisions of IPC and Prevention of Corruption Act. In 2010, a report by the CAG said that the exchequer had a loss of 1,76,645 crore rupees. Cases were filed against many including the former telecom minister A. Raja and the then DMK Rajya Sabha MP Kanimuri. However, they were all acquitted in 2017. In 2012, the Supreme Court declared that the allocation of the 2G spectrum by the government was illegal and an arbitrary exercise of power. It went on to cancel all 122 telecom licenses allotted to companies. The scam had many political implications and we are not going into any of them today. Its bigger impact was that it changed the way the sector operated. For one, Foreign players cut back on their India plans. The licenses of many foreign companies were cancelled. The government started to allocate spectrum through auctions. This helped the government to get higher revenue but it resulted in making the spectrum expensive. In 2016, 2,355 MHz of spectrum worth 5.6 lakh crore rupees across 7 bands were put up for bids but only 965 MHz received bids. Vodafone was the highest bidder followed by Airtel. Reliance Geo won key 4G bands for 13,000 crore rupees. We'll come back to this in a bit. The prime 700 MHz band received no takers because of the high reserve price for the spectrum. In 2021, the center garnered more than 77,000 crore rupees in revenue from another round of auctions, but it managed to get bidders only for 37% of the 2,308 MHz spectrum that was put up for sale. In 2016, Mukesh Ambani launched Reliance Geo Infocom and the company had big plans. It offered consumers free data voice calls across the country. Within just two years of its launch, the company had more than 200 million subscribers. Now the company has a market share of 35% with more than 40 crore subscribers. Geo's low price overwhelmed the industry. 
the company's offer to provide 4 GB data per day for free was a big success. Within six months of Jio's launch, India became the top mobile data users across the world. The nation consumed over 1 billion GB of data every month compared to 200 million GB earlier. The price that we paid for mobile data fell drastically from nearly 270 rupees in 2014 to just 6 rupees in 2021. According to TRAI data, in May 2022, Reliance Geo gained over 31 lakh mobile subscribers. In February 2022, Reliance Geo overtook Bharati Airtel and became the second largest fixed line service provider. The company is also doing very well when it comes to broadband services. Will Geo have a similar effect again? Well, that's one thing we'll be keeping a close eye on. The telecom sector has been around for a long time and it is set to grow from here. India had 1.2 billion mobile phone subscribers in 2021 and 750 million of them were smartphone users. It is estimated that there will be 1 billion smartphone users by 2026. In fact, a report from May this year estimates that India will have over 900 million internet users by 2025 and they will be driving more than 500 million digital transactions. It expects that majority of the Indian households will have at least one internet user by 2025. This growth has a potential to fuel fintech, edtech, health tech and other sectors. The center believes that the current options will fuel this growth and bring millions of people online. In fact, Telecom Minister Ashwini Vaishnav was happy with the options. He said, and I quote, the sector is coming with new energy and that is reflected in the response to 5G auctions. To know more, check out the links in the description. As usual, if you liked our video, like, share and subscribe. For more videos, stay tuned.